Nigeria we do not have rule of law. So many people are above the law. They can do anything and go away with it. And that is why after the presidential elections, in spite of the feelings of all Nigerians, many, let me not say all, majority of Nigerians, nothing has happened. I will continue to group the way we are, heading to nowhere. So the change has to begin from the top. And our problem is leadership. And that is why my own cry has always been the failure of that presidential election. Because Nigeria needs to have a new direction. Otherwise, we will be blaming each other. Forever. And at the end of the day, arriving at nothing. Leadership is our problem. First of all, I think why the various good messages were going on, I picked out certain things. I just want to correct an impression there so that we will not be misinformed. I think part of the election process is that, whether you like it or not, why some are trying to do the right thing? Some will deliberately want to do the wrong thing in order to skew the process in their favor. And this includes misinformation or disinformation. So the Electoral Act 2022 is not confusing. It's only the actors are trying to make it look confusing. It is not confusing. So they try all means to ensure they flout the law to favor them. I don't know if you are following. It's very simple if you follow the rules and the regulation. For the commission, we are, we are guided by the Electoral Act, sorry, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, the Electoral Act 2022, and of course, the regulations as established by the commission. So we are guided by these um, principles. And for those of you who are following our activities, you find out that we keep to it. At times, when it doesn't favor you, you want to go to court to say, oh, the commission is not doing this way. No, we don't like to break the law. The first of all, going to this question, how prepared are we? Yes, you said we were unable to vote because we were unable to pick up your PVC. I remember in 2022, in 2022, uh, starting from 2021, the month of June 2021, INEC opened up its portal for continuous voter registration. And this exercise was supposed to take one year. People sat down at home. They never took the activities of the commission serious. They only waited for like a month or two months to the election before they picked up seriousness. And this was actually picked up, especially when it now dawned on them. After party primaries, they found out that, oh, probably their preferred candidates was not in this party, was not in this party. Oh, they decided it's okay because one kind is this party. Oh, let all of them now go out and register. The pressure was now on the commission. The commission plans for its activities. We don't like this fire brigade approach. And that was why for good one year, registration was on. And people expected us to do magic in one month. We tried our best, and that was why the um, registration, the registration was now extended from, instead of it to end June 30th, um, 2022, we now ended it in July. Remember, we are supposed to stop registration so that all data gathered for those who need transfers, those who need updates, those who register for the very first time, their information can be processed, integrated in the database, and of course, their PVC is printed. And the time we created was to enable us give out these PVCs to the owners so that if there are issues and challenges, we will be able to go back again, rectify them, and 
distribute these cards before election day. But Nigerians did not agree. People started quoting the law for us that we are supposed to have registration a uh, social number of days before the election day. But they forgot that it's not like I am registering and I'm giving you a card. Because of the way Nigerians are, in order for the song to be transparent and the integrity to be maintained, we try to put in every form of security, uh, what is it called, methods to ensure that the process is not, um, um, I would like to put it, compromised. Thank you for that. You understand? But people will not understand that. Like now you complain that we read over 50% didn't get their, no, that's not true. That statement is not true. The fact that you didn't get doesn't mean 50% of people didn't get their cards. A lot of persons got their cards, but some, because of this time frame, not enough for us to do our work, we couldn't be able to do this particular thing. So like, for example, now yes, I know a lot of persons, I know of friends too, who registered and their PVCs didn't come up, but their names were in the register, but they couldn't pick up their PVCs. Remember, the PVCs are produced centrally. It is to ensure that not, this process is not compromised. And because right now, nobody trusts anybody. That's why anything INEC does now, nobody wants to believe or trust INEC. And like now, they are saying, we, people say, oh, we didn't perform well. I want to say, I think as far as Vice is concerned, we perform very well. Yeah, probably at the national, we are talking of the, maybe the presidential election. I think that is what is now used to judge us. For mathematics teachers, if you are marking your students, you don't just look at the answer and you give the score. You look at the process. It's possible if you are supposed to get 10, if you have followed the right order, maybe you fail the answer, you can get 8 over 10. If you have followed everything, you get the right answer, you can get 10 over 10. Fine, there are steps we took. Like the Reverend Father mentioned, yes, our sensitization effort was massive and people followed it. If it wasn't massive, I'm not sure people were able to follow our programs and understand how it goes. So that is why every hand has to be on deck for this. It's not just INEC alone. We can only drive about 40% of the process. 60% relies on the stakeholders. The politicians themselves they are involved. Like now, I can see some parties are not even here for an orientation program that is supposed to guide them for the election. Okay, so these are what we are talking about, the engagement and things like that. Then for the voter registration process, yes. In 2021, we did an expansion of voter access. We expanded it. We used to have about 1,800, um, 1, 1,804 polling units in Bayelsa. So we did an expansion program. New units were created. 440 were added. It now expanded to 2,244. So based on this, in order not to allow certain units have zero voters, so that they will not feel that, oh, Bayelsa truly does not have these people, so those units will now be, you know, cancelled. We decided to do what they call migration of voters. So we look at the closest unit to you, if this vote, uh, voting point is too congested, they will move some of the voters to the next unit and text messages were sent. And more so, we did a mock exercise of that and names were published so that people can go and know where they are going to vote. Probably that is what affected uh, our sister here. Uh, that's why she couldn't find her name in the particular unit she was talking about. But more so, for those who have access to internet, I can see most of us having Android phone connected. It's a thing you can even access online. I remember links we actually shared of how to get this done. If you cannot, you can even visit the INEC office to get that uh, done. But I wish to apologize also. Fine, the process might not be so you know, efficient to be able to gather everybody, but of course, some people will be able to do it. But because of the constraint then, not being allowed to go by our own set timetable, Nigeria pushed us to go by their way this thing came to be. And there's no two way about it. You always expect that flaws. So when we put up a timetable, just like this one we have now, we already set up our timetable, and you are now saying, let's do something that is not possible. That's the result you get. Definitely some people will be disenfranchised because of our inability to meet up with the time frame they set for us. They're not going to the first question thrown to us by a good friend from um, uh, General Pedro, you talked about the readiness assurance, okay? And this is it. Um, as the general elections are coming up, INEC is always prepared. Remember, it's an electoral cycle, and we have three phases of it. We have the pre-election, we have the election, and the post-election, okay? As we are meeting, as at yesterday, we even had a meeting with security chiefs in Bayelsa, ISIS meeting. And in that particular meeting, they explained the last election how we performed in terms of their deployment and things like that. 
So they came to rub minds together on some of the lapses and to ensure how they are going to you know, mitigate it in this present governorship election. I think the good thing about it also is that uh, not just all the states are having this election, just about three will be having in this particular time, Bayesa, Koki, and Imo. So in terms of uh, personnel, they'll be able to get support from neighboring uh, commands and uh, what is it called, formations now to assist them in this particular election. And also want to thank you for thanking us because I know in terms of inclusivity, INEC is doing its best to ensure that uh, everyone has access to be able to vote for those that are visually impaired. INEC has also provided them um, braille guides to ensure that they can cast their vote without anyone aiding or assisting them to do that. But it's still one thing. You see, finally, it's even the stakeholders that still want to compromise the process. Okay? The issue of vote trading or buying or something like that. You see, finally, the people are even who wants to do this business. So we'll continue to talk and talk. And that goes back to the training we have at home, then talking to ourselves, we have our religious leaders comes in, we have our traditional ruler that comes in, and all those who influence and guide um, the citizens. This is where you come in to continue to inculcate the, the positive side of doing the right thing whenever it comes to electing a new leader. So I think probably as more questions come in, I should be able to throw more light on them. Thank you. I have questions for INEC. And, uh, after the question for INEC, I also have a question for Coppers. He wants to start sitting at our back. He's a Coppers seated here. <laughs> uh, my first question for INEC. If you look, you see all the sections here under the electoral uh, laws for election offenses. So my question to Aine, one, can they give us instance of the entire 36 states in Nigeria that is under prosecution after the 2023 general election? Would vote by the PUs, the SPUs, their conduct, at the polling centers, is there any one under prosecution in the 36 states out of the 770 something thousand and 90 something thousand registered voters who came out to vote, including areas where there were violence, malpractices? Is there any one under prosecution? Because all the sections of prosecution, sections of the the offenses are all in that electoral guideline. And I think I attended one of the INEC program, which all those offenses were stated there, from 100,000 to 500,000, two years imprisonment, six months imprisonment, and all that. So is INEC telling us that after the 2023 general election, nobody committed offense? If there is any, they should give us instance of just two or three that are under prosecution. Secondly, I know our society is failing. Whether you people like it or not, it is failing. And as it's failing, it will definitely also come to you, to each and every one, if it is not I know, but individually it will reach our homes. As members of I know. If you look around the streets today, if you go to hotels, you will see children of 19, 16, 17, 23 years. They are the ones occupying all the hotels right now as we speak. It's as a result of a failed system, a society that has failed. The coppers, another set is coming up again. They will soon graduate and come out from this youth service and join the queue unemployed youth. But they are the ones who also help and the polling youths motivating writing results to benefit those who, dis who decide not to get them employment. Yes. As we speak, by the end of this year, 
a lot of persons will graduate, students will come out from school, coppers will finish their youth service. Where are the jobs? Population is increasing, no industry. As we speak, a society without industry, where will people work? Today, we are talking about people. The NDLA man was talking about drugs. An idle mind is a doubles workshop. And as a society, people must look for a way to survive. Either the right way or the wrong way. So, I neck. I neck. <laughs> Whatever thing you are doing, the beaver did not fail. All of you must understand that. Beaver did not fail. In fact, beaver has helped us to curtail electoral violence, smashing of power. You can't smash. Where are you smashing it? So, the beaver did not fail. Every Nigerian should know about that. Beaver never fails. Beaver has helped us. In fact, that is one of the innovative, I give credit to INEC on that. But INEC violating their own rules. INEC set a standard. It is only INEC that can correct all this election, all this stuff we are talking about. If INEC decides, that is why you will see a bus driver winning election. It's because of Biva. It's in the Senate, some of them are the Senate uh, taxi drivers. So if INEC decides that this is what we want to do, society will be normal. Because number one, it is the politicians who appoint INEC. Politicians who appoint, politicians who appoint even the chairman of the orientation agency, politicians who appoint commissioner of police. So if political parties fail, society has also failed. But INEC should not also help these politicians to continue to conduct this pattern of election that up till now as we speak, we are only waiting for if today they nullify this, let's say they nullify this 2023 election by the Supreme by court, where we will be by now? Because there will be crisis everywhere. So INEC will also be part of those who created those crises. So my only advice to INEC, on this forthcoming election in Bayelsa State, November 11, 2023, INEC should be the umpire he said he should. And at the end of the day, we plead that all their staffs that they are sending, both the ad hoc staffs, they should not set a standard and tell politicians to submit ad hoc staffs. A man who is going for the same election will now bring a list that this is the ad hoc staffs I want to conduct in social area. And you are trying to regulate the process. So that process of allowing politicians to submit lists to you people should stop because we are going to raise alarm. Uh, orientation agency, hello ma'am, please take note of this. When the time to submit adult names of adult staffs, we know what they normally do. The reason why I'm saying all this is because we have seen the process. They call politicians to submit adult staffs. The same people you are trying to conduct elections and trying to make the system right. You call them again to bring adult staff. And the adult staff will go there and do their bidding. So even if INEC is trying to correct the system, those opportunities given to those persons will be able to derail the entire process. So please, um, in order not to take much time so that others can also contribute their own, I plead that INEC should do the right thing. Thank you very much. Why do I say that the last speaker, the IPEC uh, member, said something that struck me? He said the beavers alone, which INEC introduced, is a singular fact that INEC is on the pathway to make things right. But the, but the problem of Nigeria is not only the problem of INEC, it's the problem of everybody. It's a collective problem, it's a collective uh, solution that needs the hand of everybody. INEC introduced beavers to sort out so many of the problems that are being encountered. 
I have been following elections for about three decades. Where violent people are smashed, incident from all the rest. But I then came up with new technology to about all those areas, which is beavers. Now the area we need to armor on is vote buying. Mm -hmm. Because the past election was strictly on vote buying. And maybe some level of intimidation, which the security agencies need to do. But the part of the question I want to ask Aine, you should not give any room for one to blow the pipe and to take the tune. Why do, what do I mean? You deploy your outdoor staffs more promptly by way of let's assume some of them are going to even interior villages like Azama, no post to come back to your headquarters. Some politicians we provide the vote. And guess what? Who blows the pipe? Take the two. Then the aspect of vote buying, what is your what is the commission actually doing to discourage that? Because we cannot totally remove it. Because the level of poverty in the society, that is why the vote buying is so rampant. What is the commission doing to make sure to discourage vote buying? And what are your logistics to make sure this logistics, these things you have put in place for other staff not to depend on politicians to be discouraged? Thank you. Okay, I'll begin with the first person uh, from uh, the member of IPAC. And he talked about an instance of an electoral offender that has been uh, prosecuted in the 2023 general elections. I want to believe the 2023 general elections, the issues are still in court. Most of them have not been rounded up. So who do you now prosecute when none has been found once in many of these uh, uh, issues? So uh, when it's done, the commission through with the police, once the police are through in the investigation, they submit with their report. We have a legal department who, of course, we now start the prosecution. Mind you, remember there's a big fish that was caught, the one that happened in Boston, a resident electoral commissioner who openly uh, compromised. He has since been uh, removed and is being uh, prosecuted. I think that's one clean example. So for others, as soon as they are done with it, they will be prosecuted. Remember, 2023 is still on. Litigations are still on. Then I want to talk about our system of operations in the commission. You talk about recruitment that I and the politicians give us this and please clear your mind of that. You're creating an erroneous uh, the INA recruitment process will like before it can happen, where they bring list. The recruitment process starts with INEC open up this portal for all those who want to apply. So I thought, okay, let me start by this. INEC Biasa State, we are not up to 200 permanent staff. We are not up to 200. And we have 2,244 polling units. And each of these units has to be manned by four election personnel. Multiply that by four. Talk about the supervisors. Talk about the collation officers and the rest. We are talking of almost 10,000 staff that has to work with us. So who are these people? Biosans. So whether you like it or not, these people we are recruiting, they are affiliated to one political party or the other. If their father is not a politician, maybe their brother or their sister. So there's no way you are going to remove it. There's interest there. But because they have interest, are we going to bring people from South Africa to conduct your elections? No. They conduct elections in other country. In other country, as long as you can carry the ballot box home, nobody will question you. But yeah, even as an NX staff, if I carry a ballot box and I'm driving my car, they will stop me. Why are you taking it to you want to play while you want to stop with the ballot paper? No. Do you know Nigeria is one of the countries that spends so much money in the conduct of elections? Just because we spend money to buy your trust. It's not supposed to be. Everything, every move we make, they suspect us. The way it is, even if you appoint a political party chairman as INEC chairman, with what we have put in place, he cannot do otherwise. So let me talk about our system of operation and recruitment so that we get the facts. We, we ask individuals that are qualified to apply. First of all, for the field officers, our first line of call is with NYSC. Because first of all, we have a crop of personnel that are educated. So whatever we're going to do, it's going to give us less work to impart to them what we expect them to do. And more so because most of them will be serving in area where they are not from, the level of neutrality increases as well. Are you getting it? Then, more so they have something at stake. If they compromise and they are found wanting, 
they will not be giving their certificates. And of course, the institution, their establishment will punish them. And you know what that means? If you don't have any certificate, and maybe in the future have something to do, you know what that has already, you already created a barrier for yourself. That's one thing. We're NYC, that's why we insist that every presiding officer is supposed to be a serving core member. Every presiding officer who signs the resort sheets is supposed to be a serving core member. But then, what are buyers are doing? They take advantage of their difficult terrain to coerce most of these are officials. That's why you find out that, fine, NYC can't say because they have MOU with us, they decide to endanger the lives of these people. No. So at times you find that most times we don't even post them to these areas where if you're not used to water, we can't push you there because you want to save Nigeria. No. You have to be alive to be able to tell what you have gone there to do. So at times what we do, the next line of recruitment is as core members. As core members, those just, are, just passed out and are willing to you know, participate. We still call them because already they, are, they already have this residual of knowledge in terms of this conduct of elections. We go for that same group. Then where we don't have them enough, we will now rely on students. More so, the beavers, we all are talking about the beavers, magic and everything. Beavers, bimodal uh, voter accreditation system. What happens there is this. We find out that it is the accreditation process they use to rig election. Before the introduction of the beavers, or what is you call the smart card reader, so let me just give you a different. Before now, we had this, what we call the smart card reader, the previous device we used for accreditation. What that does is that once you're accredited, it records that you have accredited, and you go further, you're given a ballot paper, and you go and vote. After also, the manual register will be accredited. But then they abuse that because when the smart card reader fails to accredit you, because it only uses the fingerprint, they now introduce what they call the incident form. So the incident form was just a lean way to rig. Because the people, the community can decide to say they will call fine. When we say we are we we here, it's just one party that is here. They will shut up every other person. They do ballot board stuffing, they do the accreditation, use the incident form. You can't query that because already the system allows for incident form where the smart carrier that doesn't work. So they have been doing that, but we don't find out what are we going to do because this is not something. And also, once the presiding officer has signed the result, it stands. The commission cannot change it. Only the court, the tribunal, can say, "Okay, this was not done properly. It cannot be what reversed." That is the law. Now, what the beavers does is this: the beavers came with a multi way for accreditation. So whether you like it or not, as a registered voter, we already have your biometrics, your photograph and your fingerprints. So it accredits you in two ways, electronically. Either it uses your fingerprint, where it doesn't work, you have a face. Is there any voter without face? No. So in other words, every voter that is accredited to vote, his record is in the beavers, unlike before. The smart carrier will not be able to do it if it doesn't have the fingerprint. So right now, the accredited voter must tally what is in the beavers. So for those who choose to rig, Except you are going to force the owners of those cards who didn't come that they bring their bring their head and take their photograph using a beavers. That's when you will succeed. Even if you can succeed, it will be so cumbersome for you. How much votes are you going to get from these places? So that is where the beavers came in. I actually regulated these atrocities atrocities they committed. Before now, we know in Baisa, most communities don't even see the ballot, but they don't even see INEC official. They say result is written somewhere. But this time around, people had the privilege of seeing INEC officials come to conduct the elections. Okay? So, the recruitment for the then we now talk about the students. Then where the students are not enough from Tasha Institute, especially the federal, will not go to state universities. And why do we avoid state investment? We feel because the university is owned by the state, the people might influence them. But no, it's the same thing that affects them, affects the federal. So we go. The personnel must work under the supervision of their supervisor. After all, the parties have their agents there. That is why the party agents are there. That's why we still insist. Every party that wants to go out for election should be capable. They can join forces with other parties who don't have it, fine. If I have my men here, your men should be able to protect my own there. For those who are not as big as the bigger ones who can fund it. It is an issue of, I look your back, you look mine. So that those other ones cannot skew you out. Okay, so it's a thing that we all have to play our role. Ours is just to give you the materials to go and work. Then you bring it back to us and give your reports. Then talking about supervisors, supervisors are to come from federal government agencies, staff of federal government agencies. 
So whether it's now relies on this, all those that would be supervisors now who start lobbying. Of course, some people are lobbying so that their names can be included. In Nigeria, the issue of I want to press button is everywhere. So the commission is not excluded. Even people have started calling me, ah, okay, HOD, you will have helped me this time around. These are what we are talking about. Then, when you talk about the coalition officers, fine, our first point, of course, is to go to the university. We use the federal university. So when we bring in all these people, our business is just to train them and tell them what to do and what not to do. So whatever happens in the field, it's no longer our business. Just give us the report. So that's why you have civil society, you have observers all there to see whether what you have asked these people to do, if they have done it correctly. When they have not done it correctly, through the observation, they write their report and submit back to the commission. So please, it's not like we don't give out lists to police. The police don't submit lists to us. Even if anything like that happens, there's no way politician will go outside the list coppers names that have been given to us, or this one have been given to us. And remember to just like the copper was saying there, the best security you can give to them is from the community, not even the police. And that brings up the issue of the election in Yenagwa that Madam was complaining about. Arriving late. That Yenagwa, should have to ask, where is that place? For those that listen, even I was surprised that um, the Council of Women's Society was even raising up the issue. But now if you have actually followed our process, you would have known what actually happened that day, why materials did not arrive that early. There was a mix-up in the sensitive materials, not for the presidential, but for the National Assembly, I think Senate and House of Rep. We are after sharing the ballot paper, they were finding that it was short for a particular one. A particular unit was giving more than the other one. That now created short for another point. So when these officials arrived, and you trust your people in bias and fear, those boys don't understand, so after taking drugs, they don't want to hear anything. They don't want to listen to explanation. To give hope to that, this thing can be broken. No! We are only going to pick up some down, and that should not be conducted. And that affected persistence going early enough. So we tried to intervene, and then we wondered that the time was almost gone, but like, we now said, okay, fine. The election was postponed to the next day. There was this other issue that, at the rack center, community people said, I need to not pay machine ground. So they will not allow the people to, to you know, uh, come there. You can imagine that. So at times we just come up here to say things without really finding out what actually happened. It's only bias that that thing happens. In other places they welcome them. But here they say, I make you pay money. I think it took the intervention of some politicians to now settle their youth uh, before they allow these people to come. It's not supposed to be. It's a thing that we all have to join hands to ensure the process goes smoothly. You can imagine the couple who experiences that with everything. And meanwhile, they steal their phones and other things. I, like I said, the best security is still from the community. So all hands have to be on deck so that the electoral process will be smooth. Then, okay, uh, missing names in a voter register. Like you mentioned about A to E or something like that. And mother, I don't know if you were here when I explained initially. There's what we call migration that we did. We have to move some names to other units so that a particular unit will not be so congested Why the other one has no voter because it might lead to those units being cancelled. So that you know, it will not be like, oh, we create a unit for you and you never used it. That means you never had the population. So to avoid that, we did an even spread. But sorry for the inconvenience. Before this next election, we are going to do enough publicity publish the name so that everybody will know where they are. So when those who have these challenges, please, as you find out, let them know. They should go to the nearest INEC office that covers their local government to find out where their names are. Or better still, if the headquarters is closer to me, I'm always, I'm easy to reach, okay? If you contact me, I should be able to do that investigation myself and let you know what is there. I think very soon, those who have not picked up their PVCs that are available, they will be giving their PVCs. Then, in terms of, um, okay, um, early arrival of material, early arrival of material. Remember, we have a very peculiar terrain, terrain in Bayelsa. We'll do our best to ensure that materials arrive. Ordinarily, elections are to begin from 8.30 and close by 2.30. But when it gets to 2.30, as far as the voter is there before 2.30, the voter will be allowed to vote. Even if it takes them up to 6 p.m. for all those who came before 2.30 to cast their votes, they will be allowed to vote. That is the, the, the guideline. 
Okay, and more so, we are trying, especially in the river right here, because there are some places where there are, you wake up even by 3 a.m. to start moving. You might not even arrive at the polling units by the 8.30 because of water. And also, it's not safe to move over the water at certain times. And then for areas like um, that covers land, Yenokwa, Ogbea to some extent, Nembe, Sagbama in some regions, and Kolga, and these particular areas, we try our best to meet average of at least 70% of the units within this area to ensure that we start in time. For those who observe properly, in the presidential election, we recorded lots of um, units not opening up in time. But by the time we did the House of Assembly election, we recorded it, we improved on it, and that election was open. Then, I know it's a presidential election most of us are basing our judgment on. Like he said, the beavers worked. The beavers have worked. I'm telling you, if politicians, especially in that chamber, had known that beavers would work like this, they would have approved it for them to use. All right? It's the difference that enabled you to know now that you can fight for I was cheated out or this happened or this did not happen. So let us applaud that and we are still going to improve upon this. And more so, uh, the commission is still looking at um, upgrading uh, by the time there is a better database where everybody can easily be identified. We cannot be talking about e-voting and that will now you know, relieve you the stress of even leaving your house. And maybe before you can cast your vote, or anywhere you are able to cast it, the thing will be um, recorded. So these are improvements in the electoral uh, process. So we expect everyone. So it's not just INEC alone, you are involved. Remember, your brothers and sisters are the ones assisting us. They are the ones in the security agents. And they are the ones still going out there to observe. So we welcome these um, suggestions and recommendations. It's noted, and definitely you will see the effect of all these suggestions in the next election, God willing. Thank you.